Hi! This week I thought it'd be fun to show you one of my first sketchbooks. In fact, this is the very first sketchbook. I got this in high school in my IB art class, my first year there, and um, it is completely full. No one page is blank, and there's a lot going on in here. It's mostly notes and research and sketches and plans for projects. So um, it's, it's a really interesting mix in here, and I'm really excited to share with you. Since there is quite a bit, as you can see, really thick, um, I might have to split it up into two parts. I adore this book and I've looked through and looked through and this has gone everywhere with me for so long that like the binding is falling apart. Can you see that? It's ridiculous and then like when I open it it's like flimsy. Isn't that crazy? But I absolutely adore this book and I'm really excited to share with you. Please keep in mind that this is my very first sketchbook. A lot of bad sketches and a lot of learning going on. So please bear with me. Let's get to it. So when you open the book on the cover, you see this list. And it's a project checklist from the IB art class. And it's mostly to keep myself in check. There's a separate sheet that I um, had also. But I figured this was more convenient to have it in my book. And then on the right is my very first painting. Very first. And it's a landscape and there's trees and mountains and moon and water and a little clip out of me and um, it was kind of fantasy it wasn't really going off of anything and I was very proud of this the next few images are really rough and really anime um, and cartoony because I had read a lot of manga around this time and was really into you know the big eyes and the cartoony look and my teacher had a really hard time, and even, I mean, I especially had a really hard time breaking away from that concept. And here is um, one of my first studies in value and shading and shape and stuff like that. And um, that was a lot of fun. I remember thinking, wow, that's why my pictures don't look real, because I don't incorporate this kind of stuff. So there's that. And this is some research on various artists. Here's a, something that we did at the beginning of every class. There's usually a little warm-up exercise. Um, and this one was just to draw the same cylinder using different methods of, you know, adding value and shade in there. So that was fun. I liked that. I painted thin layers of paper, different colors, and um, overlaid them together just to see how colors interacted with each other and then made it into like this paper mache collage. That was tons of fun. And um, then I was studying figure proportions and the proportion that I thought was really cool was the ones I used to draw fashion pieces on. And so I studied that a little bit and just kind of did my own version. I'm pretty sure this is the instance where my drawing of hands came out the best. And it's extra cartoony. So I don't know. Still can't draw hands for my life. And this is the best one. And it's the first one I ever drew. And that yeah, and then it was practice. This was an assignment. Here's a list of artists. Pick three and research and write a page on each of the chosen three. And so I chose Chuck Close, Jackson Pollock, and Jasper Johns. And I just have a little bit of information about them along with examples of their artwork. And then this is one of my first real projects and it's a mosaic out of glass. Um, our art department was fortunate to have a separate art room and uh, ceramics room and stuff like that and so I spent some time cutting out pieces of glass making a mosaic and just kind of coming up with whatever and it came out to be this green grassy thing and then I put red around it and then I was like well grass butterflies dragonflies let's do it and so I did that and so this is like a 3d thing and then I wrote obviously about the process I wrote a lot I think I was one of the people in class that wrote the most about um, everything and that was really important to me I wanted to record everything I learned down so so that even now when I read 
through this old book and I've read through this hundreds of times and I still find something new and remind myself something each and every time about why I love this so much and the process of learning. And so after I created this, I drew, you know, like a drawing representation of it. And um, that's really fun. I can totally see this on my wall, like a cute little welcome to our home type of piece. That's, yeah, maybe I should paint that. Hmm, what do you think? Should I do it? Okay, and then every year we have two field trips to downtown Seattle and we would explore art galleries and museums and little, um, you know, art stands and stuff like that and antique shops and I would collect everything like postcards that they had available, business cards and um, brochures and like I'd cut, cut things up and make collages of it. So of the things that I liked the most, from the places I liked the most, and then I'd write about each and every little thing here. So it's not like I just plastered on some stuff and called it good. I I selected what I liked and then like wrote about them so that I have like contact information and stuff if I wanted to later. So lots and lots of writing again. And I took a camera with me every time and took pictures of things that was interesting to me and then wrote about a few things and same. Uh, this was our first field trip so there's quite a bit of collaging and reflecting on, on between these few pages. So more pictures of downtown Seattle and this is my first shot at photography, pun intended. Um, but I didn't really know that I was interested in photography then. I just thought that I really, really like to take pictures of pretty things like flowers and made a giant collage of it. There's some string here with lots of paint and cut up, made random shapes and rearranged them and then slapped a frame on it. So I think that's pretty interesting. I always found abstract art interesting, but I don't think that I have a knack for it. So this is my try at it. First drawing I tried with my sister and again still really cartoony and um, she I made her look older in this picture at the time than she actually was but still it was fun to practice and um, I continued to make collages and write about things that were interesting to me from the field trip even after the field trip. I kept everything and I had a little notebook and I wrote everything down and so Here's more. Um, I especially really love this style. And I did a plan for what I wanted to do based on why I like these. And I never did it. Don't ask me why. Okay, more art artists that I enjoyed looking at. And more notes, sketches, and another warm-up just to pick a few colors and make random swirls. And here I really, really tried to um, make a realistic drawing based off of this anime picture. I really wanted to go beyond it and I couldn't at this time. And so there's that. So the first snowfall of the year and in our area, it's pretty rare to have enough snow and for it to stick to see even this much white. So I was really excited. I took an early morning walk behind my parents' house trail and took this picture. I often see this when I walk home from school from this bus stop and I think it's gorgeous covered in snow and scraggly lines and stuff like that. And so I took a picture of that, decided I'm gonna paint this. So I left it there as a ginormous reminder for myself. And then moons and stuff, I was, still you know brainstorming what I want to do as you can if you remember from my original first painting that I ever did exercise I really like moons so I drew this giant I painted this ginormous moon made it texturized and everything and so still researching moons and seeing how it could fit in with this painting another portrait practice of sketching um, there's not a lot of value not a lot of contrast in here but um, 
It was, I think one of my very first drawings where facial proportions looked all right, looked decent. So I really enjoyed that. And then this was another plan for a picture that never happened. And this one is for, was for a Spanish class. We made like, like a haiku kind of thing, like the Spanish version of a haiku. And you have to draw a picture to go with it. And so this was the picture. And then studying the color wheel, um, more studying of the color wheel. This was a test. We had to create this and she would like orate and tell us you know what we needed to do and then and then paint it and primary still life of fruits I a yellow pear red apple and blue grapes maybe they're supposed to be blueberry yep blueberries just kidding so this is the okay so from here on it, it was a test um, of understanding color and color concepts and stuff like that this one is probably my favorite out of the whole test because it just came out so abstractly and there's it's there's interest there and there's tension between the lines and the shapes and that looks like an eye and that to me was really interesting and elements and principles of design there is a lot of writing here lots of writing from lots of research so part of my early learning was doing so so much research and I really enjoyed doing that and writing about it um, this was an exercise I challenged myself to draw this hut using a pen and the from this point before or for, before this point it was all just pencils drawings were all done in pencils and um, I could always erase and everything, but this time I really, really wanted to challenge myself to think about where I'm placing the lines and how I'm shading things to, you know, make it look like this particular hut in my own stylized version. And I think I came out pretty good. I was very proud of this. It's one of my best early things that I drew. More doodles. Um, these sticky notes are from my teacher at the time when she goes through her books for to grade them. Um, these are actually little pieces of paper cut out. I, I drew this somewhere else and I cut it up and put it in here. Um, a cup with pencils, shoes, a phone, and I stuck this over here because I didn't really like how I drew the shoes and it was a perfect fit. And um, yeah, I really like that. I was thinking up of a concept for a sculpture idea um, in this drawing that never came to be. And then here I again tried to draw from observation and um, it didn't turn out too well because I didn't understand the concept of draping quite yet. Um, or I haven't had a lot of practice drawing drape or fabric draping and so this looked really mechanical and odd not my favorite um, more practicing drawing I got I don't know where I got this picture um, I it was Google somewhere Google search I think I just typed in like school uniform because Vietnamese school uniform because when I was in Vietnam I wore a uniform very similar to this and I wanted to practice drawing that because I wanted to do a series of um, scenes or, or or pictures and paintings of my past and it had so I was practicing this and yep came out okay not the best but like I said early sketch this one was probably the best sketch I've done so far in this book at this point and I was very proud of myself and so was my teacher we both were very excited and it's of this girl it doesn't look exactly like her actually now that I look at it, but at the time, it was the best thing I've ever drawn, as well as this. It's a little buckle from um, a friend's backpack, I think. A buckle on a girl's hood that sits in the seat in front of me. Yeah, so one girl had a jacket that had this buckle detailing, and in high school, you're sitting in rows and columns in front and beside each other. And this girl was in front of me, her hood was right at my table, at my desk, and so I decided to just sketch it, and 
it's pretty good, I'd say so, at, for that time. More sketching, more sculpture planning. I, this is planning for the sculpture of the mask, like right here. But again, never came to be. More research, lots and lots and lots of research. And this was a con. so here is a concept that I wanted to try out, which was um, myself in three different angles. So I took some shots, some selfies at the time, before they were called selfies. I took a few and I want to do a le uh, left, right, and center pro or portrait collage situation and I just sketched it out. I never actually did this because I got discouraged. I, at this point, felt very, very sad that I could not draw myself and I felt like I was getting better so I should be able to and I couldn't. I still can't really draw myself today. I can draw other people just fine. but. Something about drawing yourself, it's very personal, it's very, makes, it makes you very vulnerable, I feel like, so it really makes you examine yourself, so I'm scared of drawing myself, I don't like to draw myself. Um, here is um, a clay horse box that I made um, because it was Ivy Art, it didn't necessarily just have to do with drawings and painting it was sculpturing and ceramics and anything else that you wanted to do that was artistically related you can do in that class it, um, there was a few um, assignments that you have to complete by the end of the year but besides that it's free reign like you can do whatever you want and I really wanted to try ceramics and I made this box and I wanted to carve out a horse and so I spent a good deal of time carving this horse out and then glazing it. So, and I wrote everything that I did. Again, surprise! Yeah, I write everything down. Look, more, more research, more vocabulary. Yeah, um, one of my first eyes that I drew well. Hooray! All right, let's keep going. Um, I was studying abstract art, and this was an oil pastel that I did of a pear um, that came out pretty well. I was gonna do a series of fruit still lifes, and then it just never came to be. That's just how this class was. You just got excited about something, and you wanna do more and more and more, and then you discover something else, and you just forget about a few of the projects that you were planning before, even if you did write them down. You just get excited and distracted. So, um, abstract art. I did some more studying on abstract art. This was Kandinsky, mentioned on page 80. So I was studying here, Modigliani and everything, and then my teacher saw this and said, hey, you should research Kandinsky because he does really cool um, abstract arts. So I looked into that and He's fascinating. His art is fascinating. There is a guy on YouTube right now that um, I think has a very similar style to this, and that's really exciting. And so from there, I had been planning to do my own abstract art, and I did. And it was really just loose and free and kind of did whatever came to my mind, and this is what I came up with. I wrote a little bit about it. And I have a whole page dedicated to the process and how I felt and how it reflected, you know, the what I was going through at the time. It's pretty deep for that time. And um, here's another stab at ceramics. It was a pot that went awry. There's a hole there. I couldn't get the base right. So here is the page discussing and explaining and breaking things down of how of of everything that went into making this thing. It's a three panel um, piece so each thing is its own separate um, piece and I just put it together on a mat board all together to make it look like one piece and each piece is connected to each other somehow. So the first one to the second is like these ascending dots and then this one is like this uh, ripple of, of paint, if yellow. Yeah, everything here is very symbolic. A sketch of my sister. I took pictures of her all the time and I took a stab at drawing her again and it didn't really turn out. This one is uh, 
the landscape that I had mentioned earlier, um, the trail behind my parents' house. I talked about that earlier. And here it is, step by step, how it came to be. And there's that. It's actually sitting behind me right now, hanging on the wall um, behind, uh, above the couch. So this is my first big successful painting of a landscape. And I was super duper excited. This is done in watercolor and it's huge. It's like 20 by 30 or something or 40, something like that. Every time I worked on this, I recorded what went down, how things went. And um, so yeah, this is um, another one that I really, really like. It's from Smallville, if you recognize. I loved Smallville at this time and I watched it religiously. And then it just kind of went down the drain and I stopped watching at like season five or six or something like that. I think five. But anyway, um, Clark and Lana at prom, I think. And I really liked this picture and the scene and so I drew it and um, it's one of my best ones for that from that time and then sketching again from pictures that I like or any picture I really like from magazine my sister was sleeping I babysat my sister all the time she went everywhere with her I was always with her and um, I tried to draw her sleeping that was the time I had to do what I needed to get done and I needed to sketch, and so I sketched her. Um, tried to be expressive about it, and this was pretty, caught the feel. More research and uh, drawing from observation. This was the guy sitting in front of me in one of my classes. Uh, one of my old cell phone, this sucker, oh my goodness. It lasted so long, like, I dropped it in a puddle, dried it off, was fine. It broke, like this hinge broke, and so it opened like that, so it was just hanging by this corner. Still worked, and I still kept it and used it until it completely ripped apart and doesn't, didn't work anymore. So this cell phone was a beast. Anyway, um, another just kind of random to kind of get inspired drawing. This one, I love babies. I loved babies back then too. And because I was always babysitting my sister and I loved her and I always wanted to draw babies sleeping. And I got this picture off of a magazine and decided to draw that. And this actually later on became one of my favorite projects. So I used this baby for one of the big assignments for the class, which was to choose one subject and then recreated in four different art movements and so I did one in realism, surrealism, impressionism, and cubism and um, it's one of my favorite series that I that I've done so another one of my more successful sketches was really excited about this one and then this one I was again looking at pictures from Vietnam and stuff like that and found this picture that really spoke to me for some reason maybe perhaps because I was in a class like that once with a chalkboard like that once raising it up like that and so it just brought back a ton of memories and I really it really really struck a chord in me and so I really so I wanted to paint it and and so I did and this was like halfway through ish I made her so dark I didn't I think this was my first this was my first portrait painting ever and so there was a lot of learning going on and uh, this was the final result and I did a blog post on this but this picture is copyrighted um, I didn't know it at the time I just kind of Google searched any picture I wanted to draw and then use it but now that I understand copyright better, I took that post down because it's copyrighted and I tried to contact the owner asking for permission to use this image on my website and I will not sell this because it doesn't, the image does not belong to me. I just wanted to discuss it in my art blog and I never got a response back. So I took the post down and um, that was that. But still one of my favorite paintings I've ever done. And I did change it up a bit. I mean like I left this chalkboard area clear so that I can rewrite whatever I wanted to on there. And the girl doesn't really look like that. I mean 
but same concept. So still, still, I took it off my website. And uh, this was our second field trip, I believe. And um, I took my camera with me around again and took pictures and put it with things that I was sketching. Like I was sketching this pier or dock and then to put a picture next to it. So we had the day just to walk around and wander around and um, sketch whatever. And so I did. This was Gasworks Park and this was a fountain by the Lennon statue at Fremont. That was really fun. I, I really enjoy just sitting out somewhere and drawing what I see in front of me. That's really fun and peaceful to me. This was the troll under the bridge in Seattle um, at Fremont and it's iconic. Yeah, I have a picture with the troll. That was really fun to climb on that.